Okay. So the times interest earned for Walmart, if I'm doing this correctly, let's make sure this is right. Is 46, right? So what we would say here is that Walmart has the ability to pay back their debt. I just want to go through and make sure this is right. Hold on. That was wrong. Okay, this is 23,950. Okay. So when we look at when we look at the times interest earned, you're basically coming up here with a value that how many times of how much earnings do you have to cover interest, right? And you want this number to be as high as possible. So for Target, it's 6.6 .6 times. For Walmart, it's 11 times. That means that the company could potentially take on more debt. Okay, last one over here is free cash flows, which is cash flows from operations minus dividends and capital expenditures. So over here, you're looking at for Walmart for Target. And then for Walmart, it's over here. This is going to be 356, 656, and then 1465. Okay. So let's let's kind of take a step back and I'm I'm just going to pause real quick and make sure I did this right. So the only error I made was on Walmart. It's to the free cash flow is going to be 26,249. And then this should be nine, 9.8 billion. Okay. So the, the next part of the question. So we've done all these different ratios and it's now saying to compare the liquidity, solvency, and profitability of the two companies. So when you're looking at liquidity, there's oftentimes when you look at liquidity ratios, you're oftentimes looking at the current ratio, um, uh, quick ratio, and then the, um, the quick ratio. And you can also look at it kind of like activity ratios, uh, which is AR turnover, inventory turnover, days and inventory uh and then also the asset turnover. I oh, so there, what they do is they're they're basically saying, well, Target has a better current ratio. This is the solutions from the text. They're saying Target has a better current ratio, but again, I wouldn't be using the current ratio. I'd be using the quick ratio. So Target has a better current ratio, um, which is better than Walmart's. However, with the inventory turnover, the inventory is turning over more frequently, which is what you want to be seeing in a retailer than that of, uh, you know, the competitor. Now, the AR turnover is absolutely meaningless, and so I don't even know why they're putting this in. So for solvency, they're saying that when we look at solvency, it's really about like kind of the coverage or leverage ratios, which is they have better times interest earned, better debt to assets ratio. So from a solvency, and also you could possibly also argue to free cash flow, um, from a solvency perspective, you could say that Walmart is stronger. And also you would basically go through and say that from a profitability standpoint that, you know, I. Uh, you know, for profit, um, Walmart is also stronger too. They have a better return on equity. They have a better return on assets um, and a better net margin, which is or bad, it's about the same net margin. But that's where they're saying, you know, when you look at this, the, this question, you know, compare the liquidities of the two companies. If you're asked to go through and compare, by the way, first thing is on an Sam, I would never, the way I've tested this has always been, and I have to probably change it, but the way I've tested it is I would say, okay, here are some financial statements and here are three or four ratios. Tell me which ratios you would best use to look at this company and why. And I think that that's a better question because when we look at it, 
if I were to say to you, well, would you choose AR for inventory? Now, remember this, this AR number for target really is like zero, right? So, or it's be very small. So you would say, well, as a percentage of total assets, Walmart's inventory is significantly greater. This is where I was starting out at. So again, this is, and you can hear my frustration in making this video. It's not the fault of Wiley. It's just kind of myself. And it's really, when I teach managerial accounting, one of the challenges that I have is to say, well, you know, I've got to teach this chapter and it's online. And what is the best way that I can go through and teach this to a student? I don't know. And so it really comes down to just coming up with a few different ratios and saying, okay, do, do this on a test. But the reality is if I had, if I had more time and resources, I would be having my students write papers and the importance of the paper writing. And I'll, I'll leave a link to uh, the content I have as far as this, as this particular question goes, if you go into my playlist, you'll see, where did that go? I have my students, and I mentioned this, I think, in the previous uh, the previous video. And so right over here, so my financial statement analysis for spring of 2022, this is my far the better way to go about a learning financial statement analysis. Go on to sec.gov, pull down two different companies, write a paper. And the reason why this is actually more important than you would think is that if you write a paper, you can then, when you're interviewing with an accounting firm, you can sit there and say, hey, um, you know, here's the paper I wrote. Well, check this out. It's pretty exciting. And it gives you something to talk about on an interview. Okay. So that's my preferred way to do it. But unfortunately, because of time and other considerations, I have to test it this way. But in any event, I want to thank you for being here today with me. More biggest thing of all is to give a huge shout out to Wiley for, for allowing me to use their material. And I have to commend Wiley as well as the other publishers because trying to figure out a way to go through and to, um, to go through and to teach this is absolutely brutal. It's, it's one of the hardest subjects to teach financial statement analysis. So with this last video, I will be seeing you all soon and have a great rest of your day. Have a good one.